No? And if you guys are ready, say I'm ready. 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 Perfect. Let's get started. So I'm sponsoring, guys. First of all, when you sponsor somebody, what you want to do, you want to schedule a strategy session as close to now as possible with every single new VIP agent. So here's the thing. Remember the basic training, guys. In the seven absolute, we talk about setting up a game plan interview. Who remembers that? Say aye. 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 So when you set up a game plan interview, you need to sit down with them and find out what motivates them. What are their whys? What they're willing to give up? See, somebody starts in this business, this is in addition to what they're doing. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. yeah. So we need to find out why are you doing this business? What drives you? Because this business, this vehicle, what it does is that it gives everybody an opportunity to make the same amount of money, replace their income, or make more money than they're currently making, but it requires them investing some extra time. Can we agree? Yeah. Yeah. About seven to ten hours a week if you're part-time. So you have to identify what they what they want and what they're willing to give up. And get them uh, to the basic training as soon as possible, whether you train them at a Starbucks or you bring them to one of these events. You guys notice that after a lot of our events, we do a basic training afterwards. Can we agree? Yep. Mm -hmm. A couple of things I want to talk about that. We'll get, well, actually, we'll get into that in meeting conduct. But after the training, I get it, guys. You guys already been to the meeting, and you guys are tired. You guys want to go home. If you got new people, and even if you don't got any people, it's always encouraged to stay for the basic training. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. I understand. Sometimes we got to go. We got things to do. I get that. But the more people we have at training, then the new people realize, man, these and, and people here are serious. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. yeah. It's very important. So anyways, when you sponsor somebody, guys, there's a difference between the recruiter and the sponsor. There's a difference. It's like being a daddy and being a father. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. So there's different types of parents, right? There's some parents that are there, some parents that are not there. Same thing in this business. There's a lot of orphans out there because they don't have the right sponsors. A good sponsor understands that signing somebody up is so incredibly crucial to sit down and do the right things with them in the beginning. If not, they're going to quit. Once they quit, they're done. Does that make sense? The best thing you can do is go out there and recruit new people because you could... Guys, it's easier to give birth than to revive the dead. Does that make sense? If you throw, if you throw an alarm clock in the cemetery, you're not going to wake anybody up. They're gone. Does that make sense? But here's the thing: for you to avoid them going, you know, out of the business and not coming back and joining, you know, the the, the witness protection program on you, you got to set up a strategy session for a game plan with them. That's what a good sponsor does. Okay. So sponsoring people in this business. Uh, uh, People do this business with people that they know, like, and trust, okay? That's why we ask them to make a list of all their friends, family, neighbors, acquaintances, okay? People that they like. If they don't like you, they're not going to do business with you. The bottom line. If they don't like you, better believe them. The first, guys, I know a lot of you guys know this. What is the first sale that we make? Yourself. If you're selling real estate, yourself. yourself. If you're selling insurance, yourself. If you're selling this business opportunity, yourself. If they don't like you, they won't join you. I encourage you to be nice to people. <laughs> right? Don't be a jerk. Don't be cocky, right? Stuff like that. So, similar interests and shared experiences. See, a lot of times, people, when you're prospecting somebody and you're asking them questions, you want to do is find common ground. This is very important. People will tell themselves that they like you very fast. With men, it's usually about a minute from when they meet somebody, they identify whether they like them. With women, it's even faster. They identify whether they like you or they don't like you. It's unconscious. You, does that make sense? So, like, for instance, when you're doing a conversation, when you're having a conversation with somebody, you're like, what do you do, bro? You look very sharp. All of a sudden, you pay them a sincere compliment. It's got to be sincere. Does that make sense? Yeah. You do these things, and here's the thing. By the simple act of asking questions, people like that. You look like, like for instance, you could go and, and like, let's say you go out on a date, and you're just asking a bunch of questions, and you give people verbal and physical feedback. You're asking them questions, they ask you, like, oh, right, okay, good, and you're shaking your hand, you're smiling, verbal feedback. Does that make sense? Yeah. They might tell you, oh, I work at UPS, right? Oh, great. You know, what do you like about working at UPS? Or how long have you been working there? Before you know, you ask like four questions. They went on talking about every question a bunch of times. Then they're like, oh, this guy's a great conversationalist. Does that make sense? All you did was ask a couple of questions. And one question led to the other question. So anyways, that's just a little tip when it comes to this. And with people that, so here's the thing. Start connecting with people. Who has Facebook in here? Guys, if you have friends that you haven't connected with, maybe connect with them. Genuinely ask them what they're doing. 
Don't pitch on the business right away if you haven't talked to them in a while. But start building that relationship. Does that make sense? Then when you start interacting with these people, then they're going to take an interest to in what you do. Eventually, they might ask you. Start building relationships. Don't try to hit a home run the first time. Try to get to first base. Does that make sense? Yeah. Then second base, third base, and eventually hit a home run when you get them to this opportunity to sign them up. Okay? And people that they trust, do what you say you're going to do with integrity. Believe that you are not only about self-gain. They need to believe that you're not only about self-gain. And the cool thing about this business, guys, is if, if when somebody gets to understand it, they realize you have an incentive to help me get paid. Does that make sense, guys? Yep. But if you sign somebody up and you're not a good sponsor, you just sign them up and they got you to founder three or director three or founder four, and you never help them out, you never set up a strategy game plan with them, guess what they're going to know? You're not about somebody. You're, not, you don't, you're pretty much about self-gain. VIP agents need to feel safe to fail in front of you. Otherwise, many will join the witness protection program. They will hide off of embarrassment. People need to know, like, hey, man, it's okay. The why do you think we always talk about? You invite 10, about three to five will get started, and that's okay. You guys see what I'm talking about? We actually prepare people at the meeting. We're managing people's expectations at the meeting so they know, oh, okay. But here's the thing. If let's say you show the business, you don't tell them stuff like that. When somebody tells them no, they get embarrassed, they feel bad, they think it's only them, then they quit the business. It's okay to talk. Once they're in the business, say, hey, listen, no, they're part of the business. It's fine. Give them a couple stories. But then give them some positive stories as well. Don't focus on the negative, right? Okay. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. People quit on business faster than they will quit on friends and family. That's why when we do this stuff, guys, it needs to be an environment like family. By the way, I have a question for you guys. We've been talking about doing a movie night for, for a while, okay? We were considering doing a movie night here, like I think, Friday. How many think that's a good idea? Okay, watching something like The Pursuit of Happiness, Pay It Forward, something like that. And obviously, we got you guys know that we got the boat trip next Saturday. Yeah. Who's going to go on that boat trip? Raise your hand. Everybody. <laughs> We've got tickets here. So. But anyways, here's the thing, guys. People won't quit on friends and family members. So if you get them involved in this business, they show up to train. They know that you care about them. It's harder for them to quit on you because it's not just business. Now it's more like family. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. Very important. That's why you got to get them to this environment. you got to create that family. Why do you guys think when somebody signs up, what do we say? Family. Yeah, and we got a new what? Family member. Family member. And everybody needs to get excited. Hey, good job. Even if you didn't run over to them across the room and give them a high five, when you pass by the person, hey, good job, congratulations, welcome to the team. You're working with a champion. We all have to edify each other. They, they, the new person needs to know, dang, there's a big old family. Everybody's got each other's back. Everybody's excited enough. To, everybody goes to the together. Everybody takes notes. So your goal is to help people move forward. Four types of VIP agents. Okay. The watchers, the crawlers, watchers, and the runners. The watchers, these are customers, you know, they want the discount club, they, they join for help. They enjoy the service or the products, the crawlers, right? And they'll refer from time to time. These are the spare time guys. Right? You know, we talk about the, 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 the full timers, the part timers, and the some timers. The crawlers are the some timers, pretty much. Then the walkers, they're part-time, you know, they come to events and trainings, consistently enrolling new members and agents. And then you've got the runners. These are the builders, the leaders, the teachers, the mentors. These are the people that want to go at the, the executive levels and above. So here's the thing. The watchers, here's what you do with the watchers. You let them watch because they're customers. They, they, they might buy product here and there. They'll use the services. They'll enjoy the services and the discounts. The crawlers, you let them crawl. The walkers... You walk with them, and the runners, you make them a lot of money. You identify the runners, and you go out there, and you lock arms with them. Remember the 80-20 rule, guys? Remember the 80-20 rule? Yes. Yeah. Who does not know what I'm talking about with the 80-20 rule? Be honest. Raise your hand if you do not know what I'm talking about. Okay. This is very important. The 80-20 rule works like this. 80% of your organization, the majority, will do 20% of the volume. Does that make sense, guys? 8 out of 10 people will do 20% of the volume. They'll do very little. And that's normal. This is the truth in real estate, insurance, any business. This is the truth. And it applies to all of them. 
But then 20% of your organization will do 80% of the volume. You guys follow what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. So you have less people doing more and more people doing less. This is normal. See, this is also important for you to know as you're building a team. As you're team building, it's important for you to know here's why. Some people have literally, I used to get thrown off by this. Like, man, why do I have so many people? About 20%. Like really doing the business, and then so many people are not doing hardly anything. Guys, if you own a real estate business, I guarantee you, two out of every ten are really knocking it out of the park, really going for it. Eight out of ten are just like, I've been bold in real estate too. And I've been bold in network marketing. I've been a part of the 80% that came here, here and there, that the thought of making a lot of money, reset joy was awesome, but I didn't take it seriously. And I was a some timer guy. Real estate, same thing. I remember I just wasn't motivated. I used to see the older guys come in early, go door knocking for a couple of hours every day. Get back and make phone calls. Go out lunch, they come back and go, you know, make phone calls, go show properties on the weekend. This is normal. Here's, here's how you do it though. Now let's talk about your time. 80% of your time and 20% of your time. This is the time. 80% of your time goes to the 20 percenters. This is very key. 20 percent of your time goes to the 80 percenters. See, now you're like, man, but you're giving less time to more people that doesn't make a group. They don't even notice it. You see what I'm talking about? Because they're not even engaged, really. And that time, I really give it to them at these events, at the opportunity needs. But think about it. Let's say you got Jonathan that's knocking it out the park. And then you got some other dude that's like the 20 percenter. And they both ask me for an appointment at the same time. What do you think I'm going to do? 80 percent. For this guy, for Jonathan, the 20 percenter. That's where I'm going to invest my time. See, we only have 24 hours a day. Can we agree? Yes. yes. Bill Gates and we do all have 24 hours, right? Yes. Bill Gates doesn't have 25. <laughs> right? He has 24. Everybody write down time management. Time management. Time management. This year is time management. They say that that's one of the secrets of the rich, and it is. One of the secrets of the rich is time management. How they spend or invest their 24 hours. You only have 24 hours. How do you spend it? Shoot, if you got up 30 minutes earlier and started, let's say, for instance, you go to work in the morning, and you got up 20 minutes earlier, right? And then, you know, you send your team a, a, a text with the events and a motivational quote, and then you message 10 people that you haven't, you know, whatever. On Facebook, for instance, right? Something simple like that. You took the, okay, fine, 30 minutes. Gone. You know, you, like uh, Eric Thomas talks about in the video, that they ask 50 Cent. When you're doing the movie and you're doing your, your album, when do you sleep? And 50's like, sleep? Sleep is for those people who are broke. Does that make sense, guys? Why? Because it just is, <laughs> right? Eventually, eventually, you're going to go out there and be able to sleep all you want if you want to. Watching TV. <coughs> During your peak hours, that's for broken. Remember, like a lot of you guys heard me saying this before. What's your favorite Lamborghini and Ferrari commercial? You don't have one because they don't exist. Because people that, that drive those cars aren't watching TV. Nice. Can you feel me? Think about it. You never seen no damn commercial for those. Because the people that are driving those cars are too busy getting rich, not watching TV. You follow me? But see, here's the cool thing. A lot of people that are rich, they don't got time to watch TV if they wanted to in a traditional business. You've got a business where you could really get rich and have be rich in time and rich in money and rich in relationships. Because if you got the time, you can invest to your family, don't you? Yeah. Well, you've got something powerful here. What if you're like an awesome attorney, but you're working around the clock. You're working with celebrities and athletes around the clock. You make a ton of money, but you don't got no time to, to uh, enjoy it. Is that cool? Nope. I'd rather be like, have a 9 to 5, working 40 hours a week, barely paying my bills, but have the time to spend with my family. If that's, if that's the difference, you guys see what I'm talking about? But that I'm building a business, we're building a business, where we can have time and money freedom. Nice. Here's the thing. If this guy right here quits, that leaves more people, people that he knows, people that his neighbors, his friends, and family members, open for one of us to take them. So I don't care. Somebody quits, cool. Less competition. So the runners are people that we spend the majority of their time with. 80-20 rule. 80% of your time goes to the 20 percenters. 20% of your time goes to the 80 percenters. 80 percenters don't even notice it. you got to work with the people that deserve it, not the people that need it. 
Does that make sense? Yeah. Straight up. Real talk. You can't tell me, hey, I haven't been here for a month. I didn't get my membership last month, but I need you to do a meeting for me. You know what, bro? You need to earn that for one of the leaders to do a meeting for you. You gotta be, You don't even come to train. You don't even go, come to any events. I can't do it. I got plenty of other people that deserve my help. It's, it's strictly business. Does that make sense, guys? Right. Now, we understand, guys, sometimes things happen. We're, we're not going to be able to make it for whatever reason. That's going to happen to me. That's going to happen to you one day. It's understandable, but you know what I'm saying. So tap into why. Do you have? Do I have permission to ask you a couple of questions so I can help you get started when you sit down with somebody? Okay. History questions. Where are you from? Family, kids. Build rapport with people. Get to know people. Okay. What's the most important thing in your life right now? Who's the most important person in your life right now? This is a good way also to get find out what people's minds are. You need to know your people's minds. What's the thing that holds you back usually? What would you like to change right now? If money was an issue, what would you do with your time? That's a good question to ask when you pick up your, your, your guest, or you're coming with your guest to the meeting, or even if you're just here at the meeting and you're here before, ask them. That if money was an issue, what would you be doing? Get people to think that way. So when they see the presentation, that they're looking at the presentation with different eyes. You guys see what I'm talking about? Because yeah. you stimulated some, some thoughts that they didn't have before. And you get them dreaming, you get them thinking of these things. Man, well, what I, I travel with my family, or I do this, I do that. Okay. Create a list. Help them create the list. Learn to use a memory jogger. Our faster bookers that are getting created, guys, are going to have a memory jogger. They're going to help you write down more names, okay? Get names physically on paper. Remember, not on your cell phone. Identify the top 10 best and easiest people to invite. When you sign somebody up, guys, Find, get, when you're doing the fast start training, the game plan interview, find out their wives, when to give up, and all that stuff, and make sure that they write a list. Find out who are the top 10 people that you know, that you could invite right now, that you feel the most comfortable in inviting. Here's why. If they feel comfortable inviting those people, they get practice with them too. Right? But you want to get them to get action fast. You want to get them to put people in front of the information right away. you got to have a sense of urgency. If I opportunity, we're talking about home meetings, open house, uh, sit down, website conference calls, right? Open house, I mean, when we have events here like we did yesterday, like we're having tomorrow and Thursday. Okay? There's stuff we're going to go by fast. A lot of this is in basic training place. Sponsor no notes. Okay? These are the things you do not want to do. Sponsors that don't call. 70% of agents never get a call from the outline. Or sponsors that call too much. Calling somebody 70 times in a day. <laughs> like, guys, imagine if you started, you know, going out with some women and calling her 70 times a day. <laughs> She's probably not going to answer your calls very really long. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> By the way, see, my girl's calling me right now. <laughs> uh, not building relationships okay? or giving orders. No one is your employee. We don't give orders here. We suggest things, right? We guide people. But if they don't want to do it, they don't have to do it. Yes. I'm not going to get fired. Now, here's the thing. If I tell people to do something like follow the system and they want to be successful and they want my time, they're not listening. I'm simply not going to tell them and I'm not going to invest my time with them anymore. If you have a mentor, you pick a mentor, don't challenge your mentor. If not, why'd you pick them for? If you challenge your mentor, what's happening is that you're like like saying, like, well, I know more. If you know more, then you, know, you don't need a mentor. A lot of that times in a mentor protege situation as a protege sometimes we're not going to know by our mentors that certain things are not going to make sense later on they'll make sense you have to go through and have faith like hey you know what man there must be a reason why that's fine that's how i felt about coming to, to they said don't miss a meeting it's 52 week commitment minimal it's like but i got no guess in the beginning like, i got no guess why am i gonna go that was what i used to fight with then eventually i still didn't get it but i made a decision i'm gonna go anyways because that's what he said Whatever, because I'm not getting the results following my way. I'm going to follow this way. Then I start having results. Okay? Don't know agents why. You need to know why they're doing the business. Or don't meet with them where they are. Okay? Don't meet with them where they are. Overload agents with too much info. Okay? For instance, I was talking to one of you guys that's here in this room. You know who you are. And this is a good thing. It's not, it's not a criticism. But you're still nice help. I was talking to this gentleman. And he said, yeah, I'm going to meet with my new associate. So I could train him. He's brand new. I said, perfect. We need to train him. I thought that's what it was going to be. You know, 
He says, the, what is it? The wind formula. You guys seen the wind formula? Yeah. Okay. Some of you guys asked me, we got time, I'll share it today. And I said, no, 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 no. Can't show the wind. The wind formula is good and it's necessary. But the person's a new agent. They need to know the basics. Can we agree? Yeah. They need to know how to go from zero to hero fast. They need to know how to go to record three and founder three. And the wind formula is good philosophy. You know, thinking like a champion, never quit and all that stuff. But that's not going to get them to the next rank. They're, they're still like, okay, I'm motivated. I'm inspired. But what do I do now? <laughs> You're going to train them why, what they're willing to give up, how to make a list, and how to contact the list, how to put butts in those seats. That's what they got to know. Don't overload them with information. You sign somebody up, you got to be relentless. You got to be a lion. If I say a lion. A lion. <laughs> Meaning, you gotta have a sense of urgency. You gotta go. You gotta sprint. Get that new person. Get them trained right away. You guys see what I'm talking about? Basic training. Why is a lion? Look, is a lion the fastest animal in the jungle? No. no. He's considered the, the king of the jungle, isn't he? Yeah. Is he the biggest? No. no. His attitude, though. His attitude is why he's the king of the jungle. That's a stud, right? His posture. His posture. Got big old hair, right? <laughs> <laughs> you see my son? Got <laughs> <laughs> big old curly hair. So, anyways, you gotta sign him up right away, right? And get him trained fast. Don't be somebody that's not likable, right? Or offensive, offensive or insensitive. Sometimes when I'm going to ask, ask a new distributor that I just sponsored a question about, and, and I feel like it might be a little bit tough, I ask them for permission. Can I be honest with you? Does that make sense? He's like, I'm hitting him with a velvet hammer. Can I be honest with you, bro? Like, let's say he gives me some dumb excuse, right? Like, he's, let's say he just complained about why he can't and all this and that. You know, or, you know what, I man? It's just tough. My friends don't have any money. Can I be honest with you, bro? Yes. Let's go find some new friends. But don't prejudge your friends before you even ask them. Ask them, offer them the opportunity. It's 100 bucks, bro. If your friends can't come up with 100 bucks to do this business, they're not right for this business and you don't want them in your business anyways. That's right. I'm just being honest with you because you told me I could be honest with you. See what I'm talking about? Yes. On the contrary. If I just tell them, bro, you're really stupid. <laughs> We're like, dude, you know what I mean? You, they, you, what do you mean they don't got no money? If they don't got no money, you, we don't want them in the business anyways. It makes a big difference, these little things. I always like to ask for permission. I do that with prospects all the time. They say, I don't have any money. Can I be honest with you? Yeah. Or feel, felt, pop. We're going to get into that right now in a little bit as well. Okay. All right, guys, we're done for the day. So, just kidding. <laughs> Somebody's like, what? We're just promoting. Mastering the event the tape line is what we're going to promote next week. Okay. You guys know what this is, right? Yeah. It's a boat trip. It's going to be good. Two drinks minimum. Two drinks minimum. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, guys, little, little reminder. Do not be the guy or the girl that goes on this thing and has one too many drinks. <laughs> like, real talk. Guys, a lot of companies and teams don't ever do stuff like this for that reason. You guys realize that? Yeah. If that does happen, then there's not going to be another one. Yeah, you're gonna like mess it up for everybody else. Yeah. And you're gonna be on YouTube. <laughs> and you'll probably be on YouTube. You, you know, you know oh, that way. Uh, we got the GoPro. <laughs> <laughs> and the founder of course, and got the channel, you got three GoPros. Like, damn, are they really doing that? <laughs> <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Don't be that guy. You got a question? Yeah, I think that's 25 now. 25 for the event by itself? So 35 is for the event and the Super Saturday. You guys are the Super Saturday in the morning, right? Yeah. If you want the event only, you're not going to Super Saturday, which I'm wondering, why would you go party? You got time yeah. to party, but you don't got time to go to training. You see what I mean? Yeah. Like, your ass better go to training instead. You can only go to one. Straight up. See, I'm going to be honest with you, man. All right? But, like, let's say, for instance, other teams, they already bought their tickets for the Super Saturday for 25 bucks. You go on the website to buy your ticket for the Super Saturday, you're going to pay 25 bucks. You buy that individually, you pay twenty-five. We've got the tickets right now for thirty-five bucks for both. You don't have to do both. You know what I mean? We're just here's the thing. For those of you guys that don't know, we told the company. We said, hey, 
they, since they decided to want to do a corporate event, they're like, you guys are have, you guys are rocking, you guys are doing a lot of big things in, in LA. We want to have the LA event be the first regional event that we're going to do on our tour. And we say, yeah, I, I guess we'll let you guys come to our event. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, real talk. Seriously, they asked for it. If they could, and I figured, hey, it'd be cool to bring it here. And that, that shows a lot, right? That we're doing something right. But then, then they're like, we charge $25 for our events and all that. And I'm like, well, we were going to charge like 10 bucks for the Super Saturday. So we're going to do this here. So I said, we told them, we already have 150 people that already paid for their tickets. So you got to honor their, their price. So we fronted that money for those tickets. You guys see what I'm talking about? Yeah. Everybody's going to pay 25 bucks. So... Who doesn't have a ticket that, that needs to get a ticket? Raise your hand if you don't have a ticket, you need to get it. Okay. So here's what's going to happen. Raise your hand. So we got two people there. Okay. You guys here. Get, here's your tickets. You guys can take care of it with art on the brick. Okay. Okay. Anybody else? I know a lot of you guys already have them. Okay. You can take care of it with, with art. We got cameras here. So, <laughs> <laughs> so no, no. But, but seriously, if we wouldn't have done that, you would have been stuck in 25 or 25. Yeah. You guys see what I'm talking about? So we said, what's a good number? Let's say 150. So we're responsible for those 150 regardless. You see what I mean? Yeah. So I just want you guys to know that we do a lot for the team. As a leader, that's what you have to do. A leader takes, the reason why we mention that is because it's important that you know that. Right? So don't take it for granted because once they're gone, they're gone. And we've got that many. Okay? So anyways, just wanted to do a little commercial. Don't miss that event. Okay. Congratulations. Good job. All right. So here, let me put the other one. Should have put the other one first. Somebody say, "Go." Here's a picture. Take your time. Take your time.